this episode we're going to talk about the mind. So we're going to look at what constitutes a healthy mind, um, what we need to have a healthy mind and how an unhealthy mind manifests itself. So most of us will at some point in our lives, if not on a day-to-day -day basis, experience mental imbalance of some description. So the highs and lows, the ups and downs just of day-to-day -day life. A healthy mind, a balanced mind will give us the resilience to be able to cope with the natural ups and downs that life throws at us. Um, an imbalanced mind starts to happen when one or more negative emotions start to influence the way we think, which will in turn influence the way we behave. So for example, if you start to be consumed by anger or hatred, then that's an imbalance because it's not being balanced out by the, the healthy, happy, joy, that side of things. The mind is the machine of the body. So the mind drives the body. So whatever the mind is feeling, whatever the mind is projecting, that will determine how your body is functioning and how you are behaving. Sometimes it can manifest something as simple as you have a bad dream or you have a horrible dream. You wake up in that, in that morning feeling depressed, feeling angry, and that then can determine the rest of your day. Um, so things like that are very, very common. Those imbalances are common, they're natural, and it's how we bounce back, it's how we deal with them that determine how balanced our mind is. Emotional imbalance is where one or more thoughts dominate the mind. So for example, we, we tend to see it as a negative when the negative emotions take over. So like I say, anger, um, fear, if they're starting to dominate the thought processes, if that's starting to dominate your behaviours, then that's when we have a mental, emotional imbalance. One of the most common things I see is anxiety. So people with anxiety, that's when the fear is starting to create the imbalance in the mind. So the fear is the dominant emotion. Um, that's the emotional imbalance. So the fear starts impacting on behaviour. Um, so for example, they may be fearful to go out of the house because of what might happen, that what if scenario. Might be scared of crowds of people in closed spaces. Um, fear of, of getting out of bed in the extreme circumstances. So that's when we see that that, um, that link between the emotional state starts impacting on the behaviour of the person. So that's what we call an emotional imbalance. One of the most common issues that my clients face is stress. It's very, very common. Um, and this is where we see an emotional imbalance that starts impacting physically. So um, stress comes from our historical ancestry, where we had, every day we were faced with grave dangers of being eaten or near-death experiences. So our stress um, response is that the muscles tighten to get us ready to flee the scene. Um, adrenaline starts pumping again so that we have that physical response to get out of the way. Um, that response still is the same today. We call it the fight or flight mechanisms. That fight or flight is still within us today, but today we're not facing the same sort of extreme threats that we were doing. So we see it in workplace if we're feeling under stress, under pressure because we have targets to meet or because we have a stressful meeting coming up. The body starts to produce the adrenaline. It starts to tighten the muscles because it thinks we're facing imminent stress. What it doesn't realise yet, and what we haven't developed, is the fact that actually we don't need to run away from a meeting. We can't just run out of the office. Um, so the, the adrenaline and the muscle, the muscle spasms, if you like, have nowhere to go. Um, so it stays within our body. Our muscles remain tight. The adrenaline heightens our, our state of awareness and that maintains that level. Um, and it's very, very hard to get rid of because we're not doing that burst of energy to get rid of it. As muscles tighten, obviously with muscle memory is really, really powerful. When you're training to do a sporting event, if you're training to, to actually do something, then that's fantastic. But what can happen is if your body is in that sense of height and stress, your shoulders are tensing, um, your abdominal muscles are clenching, that becomes the norm and your muscles think that that's how they should be. So what can start off as just a period of stress can actually lead to your body almost changing in shape and your shoulders become hunched or you start to, to um, round your back because the muscles think it's normal. Um, and that's purely because of this fight or flight mechanism that we developed many, many, many generations ago to run away from mammoths and similar. Obviously that can then impact in even more physical ways. So you start to see people who are suffering from stress um, get poorly stomachs. So that again, that can be diarrhea, constipation. That's purely, well, it's not purely, but that's due to um, the muscles contracting. So the flow isn't there. The flow through the digestive system isn't there. So things get blocked, things get stagnant, issues occur. Um, we also see headaches, tension headaches. You see a lot of people just go like that if they're starting to feel under pressure or like that. Um, neck muscles tense, that causes, as I said before in the, the previous episode, in terms of um, 
the links between the, the muscles and the soft tissues and the tendons, um, pain can really, really easily spread. So you quite often find that tension in the shoulders, tension in the neck can spread up to the ears, up to the head and create tension headaches. Even migraines um, as well can be impacted, can be triggered. So as well, when you get all of the muscles and things here, you get the jaw tensing. So you find as well, especially during the night, um, you can find teeth start to grate or just jaws clench, which can cause jaw ache. People may think they've got toothache, but actually it's all around here. Tinnitus again is a really, really common symptom that I see in my clients, people who've just got massive amounts of muscle tension, the soft tissue around here um, creates the, the, the blockages that cause the, the tinnitus effect. People can lose concentration, so again it's a physical symptom but it's an emotional symptom as well, so if people struggle to concentrate, st struggle to remember things, that can also be as a result of stress because of the adrenaline that's going through that just wants you to get out of that situation, it doesn't want you to stop and think and think clearly, it just wants you to be out of there. So yeah, the impact of stress on the emotions can be, can be enormous as well. Um, so we've sort of mentioned the fact of the loss of concentration, but also the longer the stress goes on, you can start to develop um, more negative thought processes. The negative imbalance comes in even more. So again, that's where fear can start. Um, loss of self-control, loss of self-esteem. Um, Decision-making processes become difficult because you start to lose that confidence in what you feel and what you think. You start to doubt yourself a lot more. So that can also lead to an increase in other negative emotions such as anger, easily frustrated, you get a short fuse. You see it quite often when people are stressed at work, they come home, they're not able to relax, they're uptight, um, the slightest thing out of place and it flares up. Normally that wouldn't bother them, but sh we say short fuse, but that's, that's a symptom of stress and how the emotional imbalance is impacting. So the, the um, automated response becomes a negative anger response or a fear response or an anxiety response because of the emotional imbalance. So the more and more we see those negative emotions creeping in, the more impact they have. So you get um, distinctly pessimistic thoughts coming in, always believe that the worst is gonna happen, seeing the worst in every situation instead of greeting it with that joy and enthusiasm that we'd want to see in a healthy, balanced mind. Um, we also see an inability to focus. Um, again, using the work example, um, People with busy jobs struggle to stay focused on one thing till they till they um, finish it. They'll jump from task to task. That again is a symptom of stress. It's a symptom of that um, indecisiveness that comes with the emotional imbalance. We also see worry start to creep in. We've mentioned already about the fear and the anxiety, but the worry again is that the worst's going to happen. That something really bad. That an impending sense of doom. Um, again, struggling to see the joy in life, struggling, struggling to see the happiness and the, and the, the balance to, to balance out the negativity. If you're wondering whether a loved one is experiencing stress or if you're not certain because all you're thinking about is the emotional side, it tends to manifest itself in behavioural responses as well. So things like eating more, eating less, you can have a, a loss in appetite or eating the wrong things. So instead of taking the time to prepare healthy food and going to the food you know you should eat, you reach for sugar, you reach for the carbs to make yourself feel better. Also in terms of decision making, we've mentioned it's hard to make a decision, so sometimes the behavioural um, aspect that comes with that is um, an inability to make a decision, but more in terms of removing yourself from a, a decision making um, responsibility. So just removing yourself, not putting yourself in the position where you have to make any decisions. You may also turn to things such as alcohol, drugs or cigarettes um, if you're under stress. We see a lot that people who've given up smoking sometimes go back to taking up smoking when they're feeling stressed. That's because they revert to almost destructive behaviours. And again, a lot of that is due to the emotional imbalance because of the lack of self-worth or the lack of the ability to make a positive decision. Um, even something some, such as simple as nail biting, people who've given up nail biting, who've had a lifelong struggle with it. I see some people who um, start, as soon as they're stressed, you can see them start to fiddle with the nails, then the, mouth, the hand comes up to the mouth and the nail biting starts again. So that's a really good physical indication of, of when somebody's feeling under stress. So another symptom as well is um, fatigue or conversely pacing as well. Some people feel very, very tired with, with stress. That's because the adrenaline that's pumping around constantly, getting your mind racing, um, it's, it's exhausting having negative thoughts all the time. So some people react with 
immense fatigue, tiredness, don't want to, to get up out of bed some mornings. Other people, it's the exact opposite. The adrenaline is pumping them up. They're making them, it's making them want to be active all the time. So you see them pacing, you see them constantly high, constantly on the go. So again, what you think could be anxiety, or you think it can't be anxiety because somebody's displaying converse behavior, but they're all symptoms of the, the stress and anxiety. Like I say, it's one of the most common things that my clients come with. And um, we'll talk a little bit about the physical manifestations to the body, um, but more often than not, everybody experiences an, a, an episode, at least one episode of stress in their lives. And it really is the disease of our time. So there's also other emotional imbalances um, that manifest. So things like anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, and panic attacks, I see these quite often in my clients. Um, and again, it's the physical issues that people tend to come to me with. So it's the things like the shortness of breath, um, the muscle aches, the tiredness, those physical symptoms are all symptomatic of the stress-related, the, the um, emotional-related illnesses that we see. So things like um, inability to sleep, post-traumatic stress is massive for this, inability to sleep and tinnitus tend to come from this. Um, with the anxiety, again, we get the upset stomach, the muscles clenching, the headaches, the panic attacks, we get the shortness of breath, um, the tingling in the fingers, all very, very physical symptoms. And they're all symptomatic. Everything we've spoke about so far in this episode is symptomatic of the way the emotions are linked to the body. So this is how our body is manifesting the emotional imbalances that we're feeling. So we're feeling scared, we're feeling that fear, we're feeling anxiety. The body can't necessarily cope with that. If the mind isn't in a place where it can easily counteract the ups and downs of life, that's when the body makes it physical. So the body makes it physical so you can't ignore it. So you start to get your upset stomach, you start to get the headaches, you start to get the tinnitus because we as human beings now, um, in the Western society especially, are more inclined to deal with the physical symptoms. So that's why the body starts manifesting itself so that you can't ignore, you can't ignore the tinnitus, you can't ignore the headaches because it's stopping you, it's impinging you on your day-to-day -day duties. So another great example of how um, emotional imbalance can happen over time is people who experience um, trauma in their childhood or an unsettled childhood can turn towards destructive behaviours. Again, if that mental imbalance or emotional imbalance isn't corrected, isn't balanced out. So we see examples of this, especially sort of wartime and people coming from sort of dangerous situations who've experienced real emotional trauma in their younger years. Um, and then because it hasn't been dealt with, because it has never been addressed, it manifests in behaviours. So for example, eating, turning to inappropriate food or hoarding behaviour as well, where people feel that they're at danger of losing things, that fear of loss that they've experienced as a child begins to manifest as an adult and they, they um, keep hold of what they can or they get, in terms of the food, they get hold of what they can at the time or in terms of the hoarding behaviour, they don't want to lose what belongs to them. So they keep repeating that behaviour and that just grows and grows as the imbalance grows and grows. We've looked at how um, the emotional becomes physical, but it's actually chicken and egg. So you can actually have a physical issue that leads to emotional problems. So on its most basic level, simply living with pain causes people to be upset. It's horrible living with pain when it's inhibiting what you can do on a day-to-day -day basis. That in itself can just cause the anxiety, can cause depression, can cause stress, just purely through the pain itself. But when we start to narrow it down and actually look at that relationship between the muscles and the emotions, so going back to our traditions that we mentioned earlier in terms of the different ways of looking at medicine, looking at the, the balance of the physical and the emotional, um, you can see that the, the, the links do exist. So if we break it down and look at individual muscles and their links to emotion, you can see how a physical ailment can impact very, very directly and very acutely on somebody's emotional state. So take, for example, the source muscle. The psoas muscle is a really, really big, really important muscle and it basically connects the top of your body to the bottom of your body. It starts around the back of the rib cage and it travels down through the body, down, basically down the leg, to the side of the leg. But a lot of that is around the dantien. We'll go into detail in this in the next episode, but the dantien is um, a center, it's, it's one of your chakras basically. So the psoas muscle is impacting on your physical 
your physicalness in terms of your abdomen, your, your um, rib cage, it's passing through an area that we know to be very, very energetic, one of the energy centers, um, and it's a massively important muscle in terms of moving. So without your source functioning properly, you struggle to run, you struggle to walk effectively, you end up with hip imbalances because the other um, muscles around the lower back, the hip flexors, um, or the muscles down the side of the leg start to take the flack if the source isn't working. When our bodies go into that fight or flight trigger, the source muscles tense up. Um, so we've got, yeah, we've got the, the impact on the breathing through the rib cage, we've got the impact on the energy center in our dancing and in our stomachs. Um, and the source muscle also relates to the reptilian part of our brain, which also impacts on fertility and digestive issues as well. So we've got a whole host of things that physically and emotionally can be impacted just by the tightening of this, of this massive muscle, this source muscle. And that's a prime example of how a physical ailment, a physical issue can start to cause energetic and emotional symptoms. If we're sitting all day and if we're seeing that source muscle being tight on a day-to-day -day basis, our bodies will eventually think that we are in fight or flight because the source muscles are tightening up. So the body will then start to, to release the adrenaline because it thinks we're in fight or flight when actually it's the physical, the physical is happening first. The physical, um, the body is getting ready, ready physically to run, but we're not in that situation. So the, the emotional response comes after that. We then start to get stress. So over time, a tight source will cause that anxiety, will cause that stress, will cause that fear because you're, you're almost in effect artificially creating the fight or flight through the tightening of the source muscles. Um, so the other way around, so if you're constantly in that stressful environment, if you're feeling the stress and not dealing with the stress, then your source muscles will just be tight the whole time. So that can cause the reproductive issues, it can cause the energetic issues, which again we'll, we'll go into a bit more detail in the next episode, um, and it can cause the physical pain, it can cause the shortness of breath because it's pulling the rib cage. So the shortness of breath, as we know from previous episode, the rib cage is linked to the shoulder, so that will then cause shoulder issues shoulder and neck are linked through the muscles and the soft tissue. You get stress, headaches, migraines, um, you get the tinnitus, so the whole host of everything that's that's connected. I said before as well in terms of the psoas not functioning, so quite often what can happen because you're not working your psoas as it's meant to be worked on a routine basis, you could have one side of your body where your psoas is working, you could have, and this is really really common, where it just fails, the psoas muscle just does not does not um, fire at all. The other side could be so tight because that's sort of taking the flak for the other side that's not working. So you could actually be in a situation where your hips start to move because the muscles on one side, so for example, if your psoas muscle isn't working on your left-hand side, the hip flexors, all the other muscles start to take the flak. They start to develop, they become stronger. That has an impact, that has the impact of slightly twisting the pelvis so you can, could end up with pelvic imbalances as well as one side becomes more tight than the other side. From that, I get so many clients that come to me saying, oh, I've got one leg longer than the other. And you look and they're presenting, you get them to lie down and you kind of pull their leg slightly and they present as if one leg is maybe a few millimetres longer than the other, but actually what's happening is it's those source muscles and the other connective muscles that aren't functioning as the system. So you're getting the pelvic imbalance that causes the, log, the leg length change that then causes um, a physical balance issue. So the balance, as you stood up in person with, um, which I yet to have meet, which I've yet to meet, um, but a person whose system is functioning 100% properly will have perfect posture, will have perfect balance, their weight distribution will be perfect. As soon as you start to, to move the hips, you get um, that weight distribution slightly off. So you see people whose shoes maybe wear down at one side before the other, or whose toes point in, um, that again is symptomatic of a, of a tilted pelvis. Um, from a tilted pelvis you also get, so going back to the idea of the flow of the meridians, the flow of the energy, the flow of the blood through the body, um, you also start then to get issues with digestion, fertility problems, polycystic ovaries, endometriosis, because the pelvis is tilted, which causes blockages because things can't flow through the abdomen as they should. So where stagnation is, there diseases so the blood starts to to clot almost we get the stagnation which causes the endometriosis and the polycystic ovaries so quite often I see in my clients as well that um, 
and male fertility as well. We talk about female infertility a lot, but actually male fertility can be impeded by a tilted pelvis as well because it's all the same, the same issues going on in the abdomen. And quite often I see in my clients that um, their issues with infertility have come from um, the source muscles that simply aren't firing, which again can come from stress and from that fight or flight. So it's so common and we're, we're talking over years as well. It, it isn't something that instantly happens. You you don't just get stressed, your source tightens and suddenly you're walking with a limp. It's not that obvious and it's not that drastic. It happens over years. So we're talking maybe five, ten years of, of little bubbling stresses and 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 strains. And like we say, the first symptoms could be the irritability, the trouble sleeping. That then manifests physically in the psoas muscle or in the rest of the body. So we're starting to see now how the body and mind are interlinked, how you can't have long-term good health without the good health of the body and the mind. In the next episode, we'll bring in the spirit into this, the soul. So how the balance of the mind, body and soul impact on your whole health and well-being.